Meanwhile, in outer space, an international team of astronomers estimate that more than a trillion galaxies out there are lurking in the depths of space ten times more than previously believed. The astonishing finding is based on space images and data collected from the Space Hubble Telescope. Former NASA astronaut Mike Massimino joins us now. We should point out that Mike is also the author of a fabulous new book. It's called Spaceman, an astronaut's unlikely journey to unlock the secrets of the universe. Mike, it sounds like they're doing a pretty good job of uh, unlocking the secrets you mentioned in your subtitle every day now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, tell me, it's, it's amazing. I'm glad Hubble's still working. Well, there was a scare not long ago where they were, you know, it wasn't going to get the uh, the battery was going to run out and there was going to be no uh, no view of the universe. But yeah, it is working. Help us understand how Hubble contributed to this discovery that there are many more galaxies out there than previously believed. Well, uh, you know, Hubble is able to see deeper into space than any other telescope we've had before. And the scientists, these really smart astronomers, are able to use it almost like they're investigators, uh, like, F, like you know, FBI, CSI investigators. So one of the things they're able to do is they can uh, not only see things, but they also can uh, detect things that can't be seen by looking at things like gravitational pull, gravitational lensing, the bending of light by gravity that is out there that you might not be able to see. And with their math calculations, they're able to estimate the mass of the universe. That's how we get into this, uh, the existence of dark matter, the existence of dark energy. We can't see this stuff. We don't know what it is, but we know it's there. Same for these galaxies now that they're estimating are 10 times what we thought the amount of galaxies were. We have 10 times more than what we thought because they're able to mathematically determine how many are out there. And so they're, they're, we've only been able to see like 10% of what's there, but there's another 90% that we can't even see that's out there, which is pretty amazing. 90% that, 90 we, can't that we can't even see, see. and at the same time, 90% of the galaxies that we know about have yet to be studied even, let alone explored. So I want to ask you, as an astronaut, as somebody who has done a spacewalk, we even set a crew record at one point for most minutes in outer space, walking around, doing your thing. Will we humans ever get out there to look at these galaxies, to explore them more fully? I think so, yes, and it, it's not yet. I, it, we have, we're taking baby steps, but, but that's the way it is. These things are hard things to do, but absolutely. I think if we can figure out a way to, uh, to exist together on this planet long enough so that we can continue to make the breakthroughs and strides we're making, absolutely. I'm very encouraged by these private companies, which are doing well. You know, they, uh, they are, it, it's taken a while, but I think these private companies, along with what we're doing at NASA and what other countries of the world are doing, the excitement is there. Um, the funding may not always be there, but I think the privatization is going to figure out ways to do it more cost effectively. And yes, I do believe we are going to be traveling like we see in the science fiction movies. Right now, it's pretty tough. You know, we're having enough tough, uh, tough of a time getting to low Earth orbit. But I think uh, in the future, we're going to be going beyond that to, to Mars, I think, hopefully within my lifetime and then beyond that as well in, in future generations, absolutely. You know, I think the funding will be there if the public excitement is there. So on the point of public excitement, let's move to a new topic here. Just a few years ago, astronomers discovered a very bizarre object uh, about 400 light years away from our solar system. Uh, it was orbiting a star. It's an exoplanet thought to be either a gas giant or a brown dwarf in the elegant language of, of science. Uh, and an enormous ring system was encircling this planet. It was basically Saturn as it was was described Saturn on steroids. So Saturn on steroids, what more have scientists been able to discover about this bizarre celestial body? Well, you know, they, they, uh, they discover these things out there a lot of times because they can look at the gravitational attraction of objects around it. And they realize that there's something pulling on something out there. We don't know exactly what it is. And then they go and they look for it. So a lot of these things you can't actually spot, but you know they're there and they're far away. And so that is an example of something where we, we know it's there. We're going to try to find out more about it, but it's so far away. Even though it's gigantic, it's so far away, it's hard for us to study because of the great distance between where we are and where it is. So I think it's just going to continue to be a, a, a search for these types of objects like the planet you mentioned, other things we know are out there. Once we know they're there, we can, we can see evidence of them. You actually, it's kind of like, you know, it's, you, you see the evidence before you see the actual object. And you, you know it's there, and you have to search for it. And then once you find it, then you can study it. And so we're still trying to figure these things out. And, you know, years from now, we'll probably look back to something like that and say, geez, we didn't even know that was there. How did we miss it? And it'll be common knowledge that it's there. But right now, we're still 
we're still at our infancy. You know, we think we're pretty advanced, and we certainly are compared to where we were years ago, but there's still a lot for us to, to learn in the future and to discover. You know, based on the, the artist's renditions of uh, the rings around Saturn and also this super Saturn planet, they look a bit like uh, a record, kind of like the grooves on a Bob Dylan record. Uh, the, yeah, there you go, yeah. Could be proof it's of God right there. Yeah, you know, it's, interesting. it's interesting the way these things form. And what it is, again, it's, the, it's material. It's cosmic material, dust, particles, rocks, uh, gases that are attracted by these large planets. And they form themselves in orbits. They, one, one thing attracts the other, and that's how the ring systems form, which is really spectacular. And it does. That when you look at this, it's, it's beauty. The one thing that Hubble has shown us is that the universe is not just mysterious and, and interesting, and there's opportunities for life in other places, but it is just beautiful. And you look at those renditions, you look at the images that are returned by, by Hubble, uh, it is just beautiful. There is a beauty to it. There's a symmetry to it, an elegance to it. Um, that, uh, that as we discover more and more, we discover not only these things are there, but they're beautiful. So the elegance of the universe, could we be alone in it? That is my question of the day here. Yeah. Wired put out an article uh, not long ago describing how scientists at SETI, which is the, uh, it stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, they use something called the Rio scale, which is something they came up with to determine whether aliens are talking to us. It's a ranking, right? Um, can you tell us how credible this ranking is and just how far along we've gone in terms of uh, rating uh, p the potential for alien life? Well, I, you know, what, what they're looking for is some signal that near, there, there is activity out there that usually is of a natural form. And every once in a while, not very often, they, de they detect a signal that they think is not just a natural phenomenon, that maybe it was some other alien uh, civilization sending out a signal. Just like we send out signals, radio signals have been sent out from, from the Earth for, for very many years, as long as we've had uh, television, for example there have been signals going out into the universe. So Mike, before I let you go, you've written this book, it's called Space Man. It's your unlikely journey to becoming an astronaut. It's very likely that the book itself will inspire some people to go into your field, to try to become astronauts themselves. For those who aren't yet sold on that as a career, what is the case for space right now? Is it because we need to get off this planet because we're gonna ruin it or because we wanna find extraterr extraterrestrial life? Like what is the, the quick pitch, like 30 second pitch to a young person? Why space? Uh, I, I think it's where our future lies. I think it's it's exciting. I think that, uh, yes, it is. I think we do need to figure out a way to get off of this planet, but also to answer the big questions. Who are we? How did we get here? Are we alone? What else is out there? And I think that some of those answers can't be answered by just studying the Earth. We need to go beyond. We can study the Earth from space, but we really need to look outward into space to answer those big remaining questions. All and right. it's a very exciting future. Mike Blasimino, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It's great talking with you today. Thank you.